This is the heartbeat of human services, a peek into the inspiring stories of our community and all things DHS. Join us. Hey everybody, I'm your co-host Allison Votov for the podcast, The Heartbeat of Human Services. And today we have with us Melissa Swine, who is a Human Services Resource Family Specialist at Current DHS, and Araceli Navarro, a Program Manager in charge of the Foster and Kinship Care Education for Bakersfield College. Thank you guys for joining us today. Um, I just wanna start off, we'll start with Melissa. Uh, what exactly does human resource, or sorry, human services resource family specialist mean? It is, it is a pretty long title. Um, it was a title that was created in 2017, that's when I got the position. Um, in a nutshell, it basically means that I'm an advocate or liaison for all of our resource foster parents. So I um, help with trainings, I help with recruitment and retention events, um, I provide re various resources both within DHS and outside in our community just to kind of help support our resource parents. Perfect, and that's kind of why you work with Araceli, right? So Araceli, can you kind of explain your role at Bakersfield College? Sure. So um, just like you mentioned, I'm the program manager for the Foster and Kinship Care Program, and we are located in Bakersfield College. Um, the program has been around for over 35 years, and I haven't worked for that many years, but um, <laughs> during my time um, as a program manager, pretty much you can consider it like a coordinator. So a lot of behind the scenes work, you know, just working with BC. Um, we have 15 staff members who are trainers and just really doing all that, like I said, all that coordination and just working with BC, just being that person. And of course, being that point of contact for the county as well. So just working very closely with them as we, what we do is we, um, we serve caregivers in Kern County. So we do the training part. Okay. So what kind of training um, exactly does Bakersfield College do? Sure, so for the Foster and Kinship Care Program, um, we do anywhere from the initial training, what we what you'll hear a lot referred as the resource family approval training, which is the first 12 hour initial training for, for resource parents to become approved, and then all the way to other, you know, um, service as caregivers. We offer an annual training every year, and it, we just, you know, we try to keep up with, you know, the, the stuff needed that we hear back from the county and just the needs that are, you know, focused on that um, caregivers. Um, so it's anywhere like from seasick or like trauma informed, it's, um, you know, mandated reporter. So really focused on the needs of, you know, of the county, what we hear back and just the feedback that we get from caregivers. So we follow them all through their journey, um, you know, from the initial training all the way to, you know, all the support, all the, you know, all the back end stuff. So. We know the important work that caregivers do. We know that it's hard and we know that they do it because they love these kiddos. So we can support in the back end in any way and make an impact to the quality of the parenting. We're all there. Well, that is really great. And that actually leads into part of the reason that we're having this podcast today, which is Foster Care Awareness Month. And um, both DHS and Bakersfield College team up to put on a night for our resource parents. Uh, which one of you guys kind of want to jump into? I think Melissa can start. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's become my um, baby. Yeah, one of my <laughs> few passions for um, working in this particular um field. Uh, so it is our resource parent appreciation event. We host it annually. Um, for this year, it'll be May the 11th. Um, and it'll be at Hodel's Country Dining. <laughs> so it's really great. We've, we've already begun getting RSVPs from our resource parents. The event itself, um, it is a training slash appreciation event so part of the event we will honor three resource uh, families that have been nominated by the social workers that they work with whether that is their rfa assigned social worker or maybe the social worker of the kiddos that are placed currently with them um, so we will honor them and then we will also honor a community partner that has um, really partnered with us throughout the years and this year we are honoring um, uh, local chapter 428 for um, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. So they have partnered with us for many years now for our Breakfast with Santa event, which is our holiday event we host in December. Um, they have always donated not only just 
monetary donations, but also volunteering their time to come out and be a part of the event. Um, and then after we honor those folks, then we have our training component. We usually like to do a motivational speaker, um, but for the first time this year, um, which it'll be the first time in all of 15 years of doing it, this is our 15th, 15th um, annual. Of annual event, we are hosting a panel of four very experienced, uh, either resource parents, birth parents. Um, they are partnering with us through uh, our QPI um, coordinator or quality parenting initiative coordinator. So um, we're really excited. Uh, the panel will be uh, about an hour and a half or so, and then the main topic will be uh, foster foster parent and birth parent relationships. So we're really excited about that. And then at the end of the event, we always end with something fun. So we do a opportunity drawing for our caregivers. They can win some, some cool prizes. So we're really excited. And we, of course, partner with uh, BC with that event too. Yeah, and I just want to mention that, you know, that we're very excited to be all um, back in full force in person. Um, last year was just, you know, a, just starting to, you know, to get there, yeah. but we kind of had a hybrid model. But this year, we're just so excited to all be in person. Um, so it's just, you know, it's really nice for us to be able to partner in this special event, just because, like I said, like I mentioned before, we know that caregivers, you know, have so much on their plate you know and it's you know it could become stressful at times especially like you know working with you know everyone involved so if this is a way that we honor them and say you know this is your night and you are special to us you know sometimes the work of caregivers is you know you know again in the back burner or you know they're not primarily necessarily but like i said they are they are important and they need to know that and if that's the way we can show them then you know that's that's one of the ways that we show them back so. yeah and you mentioned that you were going to be honoring three uh, foster, resource parents and can you go into the process of, of of how you choose these resource parents and what you're kind of looking for in these ex exceptional resource parents sure of course so we reach out to um, our family services staff our permanency staff placement staff and also our RFA social worker staff to nominate a family that they've worked closely with. Um, and we kind of like to have the stories kind of based on loosely our topic for the event or our theme. So if they knew of a family, they worked with a family that um, helped in reunifying kids with their birth parents, then they do great overall. We want, we want to hear those stories and we want to honor those families. Um, this year, um, we actually have a special family. It's a probation family. So they're taking awesome. probation youth, and I believe this might be our first one um, since we've really worked um, in partnership with um, probation. So we're happy to have them on board, and it, it's a bit of a, a great story. It's, it's almost like that movie, The Blind Side, with Sandra Bullock. Um, the uh, foster youth is living with uh, a family that they, he knew from high school and they're really encouraging him to go on to, to college and he's got um, I think some sports scholarships too and they've really helped him connect with his uh, birth parents as well so it's an overall really great story and so we're we're looking for those kinds of stories to highlight and honor at the event yeah and all of them get chosen um, as part of the planning committee so you know it's it's a process that yeah. you know Melissa helps with um, but again just that alone you know just hearing from other caregivers local caregivers and the great job that they're doing it's inspiring to one another so it's definitely a good part of the of the program that we have and, yeah and I will say that uh, those that don't get picked don't get forgotten I'm also part of um, our bi-monthly uh, caregiver magazine that we do so if if a family story doesn't get picked i will definitely highlight them in our magazine so they can get recognition of course and um just anything else if we wanted to like have them on the podcast or something along those lines so mm -hmm. um we're always looking to highlight them whether it's at a special event like the may uh dinner or just in general we want to hear their good work and also share it with other resource families and the magazine gets distributed to the resource families in Kern County? Correct. Awesome. Yeah. You guys do special trainings for certain groups of uh, children that are in foster care. And I know we've talked a little bit about needs and um, 
how we are always in need of foster parents that specialize in certain things. So like older kids or special kids. Do you guys do some of that sort of training as well at BC? Yeah, for sure. We Like I said, um, we offer so many topics. Um, you know, we have anywhere from like special needs, like spe- medically fragile trainings. Um, we just had currently a training um, on how to support those kids that have um, babies. Um, so younger younger parents and how to be a caregiver for them. Um, I can like I said, we offer um, human trafficking in different um, topics. Um, sometimes we have it like more of a human trafficking type of awareness type of thing, but then we also have more specific in how to talk to children about the safety concerns or you know how to you know have the children get street smart in a sense. Um, so yeah, there's. I, I, those are the only ones I can think of right now. But like I said, we usually go off of based off of like, you know, the county needs, whatever they're telling us that, you know, is coming, you know, up or like, you know, all that trauma movement, trauma informed movement. But then also really focusing on like what we hear from our caregivers. Um, part of um, the training, you know, we have an evaluation form and right there they can give us their feedback what they want to see, how they feel more supported. So we also take that very, you know, um, serious into consideration for future um, training topics. So well, that's great. Okay, so we talked about the dinner. Um, and is there anything else that you guys are doing for Foster Care Awareness Month um, in the month of May um, that you would like to share with our foster, our resource parents? I think because our annual event is so big and it has it, it has a lot of traction, there's a lot of uh, resource parents that prior to us moving over to RFA, when they were back just licensing, they remember this event from when it was just really small and how it's grown. So this is kind of our Met Gala, if you will, um, of an event. So we really focus on this and we just try to make it the best event. Um, I do do um, highlights in the magazine. I do uh, something called Kudos Corner, where if uh, a social worker emails me saying, hey, I have this great family, um, I just want to get their story out there. I'll put something in our magazine, of course. Um, we can always call them and, and do like an interview of sorts of like how long you've been a social, or excuse me, how long have you been a resource parent and, you know, what are, what, what's some advice that you can give to our new resource parents. We're always looking for different ways, of course, to support and honor our, our families. We know that it's, I consider, um, to, working in foster care to be like a tripod effect we have staff we have community partners and caregivers if we miss one of those legs we you know we all crumble it's it all works together so they're they're as much of a vital part of this as we are and as other community agencies are so of course we're all open to ideas of any additional things we can do to help honor them or support them especially during the month of may perfect And I think it's interesting, um, you touched on um, one of the things that you look at when you're looking at foster parents, uh, resource parents, um, honoring them is how they support reunification. You mentioned that earlier, and that rolls into June being reunification month, which is perfect that they kind of go next to each other. Um, And I guess I kind of want to talk to you guys about how you what you guys do to try to support the idea of um, reunification and how I guess our resource parents can support that. Yeah, I think um, the reunification is touched on since the beginning, you know, since they come to our training, since they come to orientation, we're already telling, you know, these caregivers, we're being completely honest and transparent where reunification for most cases is the goal. Um, So just really um, touching on um, that piece that the overarching um, goal is for the kids, you know, to be safe and well and hopefully back to their bio parents. So that starts off the, you know, the rhythm for all of it since the beginning of, you know, the initial training. Um, but then, you know, even for RFA, what, you know, the training that I told you, that pre-service training, that 12 hour training, we're touching on what's the quality parenting initiative, QPI, which is, you know, um, Melissa's part of and I'm part of. So um, that's exactly what quality parenting initiative stands for, you know, like just working with bio parents, having those good relationships and being able to support you know, all the family as a whole. So I don't know if you want to add anything to yeah, that. Yeah, of course. And 
I think that that's one of the major backbones of, of QPI is, uh, first and foremost, we're, we're family-focused and child-centered, of course. But when there is a possibility of the children being reunified with the birth parents, to have the birth parents and the caregivers working together, you know, that co-parenting aspect, I think, is the key to success for reunification. Because, yes, you as a caregiver, you're taking in the child and you're caring for them in the time being, but we can't forget the component that that caregiver can also be a mentor for the birth parent. You know, they can and they can reach out to the birth parent when they don't know exactly what to do with the child, um, how to calm them down, or what foods they like to eat. And when you see that collaboration, then you can really start to see mind shifts changing and birth parents saying, you know what, I know my kid is safe with this caregiver. Let me focus on the path I need to take in order to get them back. And then, you know, the the Cinderella story at the end of this is that not only do, does the child go back to their mom and dad, but that that relationship with the caregiver is maintained. And should the mom and dad need, you know, a babysitter or something like that, they can always reach back out to the caregiver without our involvement. That's kind of our that's like my top tier goal of yeah. what I would love to see families do, of course. So, um, I, yeah, yeah, reunification is everything. Even if they don't reunify, we definitely like to see them try to maintain some sort of relationship yeah, with I, those that are close to them. Sorry, Melissa, I didn't mean to interrupt. But I also want to add that, you know, we need to also um, give, you know, everyone in the county and the work that we've done, we've come a long ways, you know, since I would say since the implementation of RFA, it hasn't always been that way. So just the fact that, you know, we're moving towards a different, like Melissa mentioned, mindset, but not only mind shift, but not only for the caregivers, it had to start with us, right? So just um, being able to, um, you know, tell caregivers like, you know, nobody or even bio parents, nobody's enemies with nobody, you know, we're all here together to work on a certain goal together. Um, so for sure, I think yeah, that mind shift has really made a huge difference. But like I said, we've seen a lot of changes with RFA and just, you know, all the great work that has been done. So yeah, and I think that's why it's so important. You said the second part of the uh, resource parent appreciation dinner is going to um, be a panel. You said you said birth parents, right? Did I hear that correct? Yes. yes okay. That's so correct. What can they expect from this panel, this discussion that's going to happen? Sure. So um, it's going to be led by one of the QPI coordinators, um, and she's going to, you know, talk about um, just various entities within a birth parent caregiver relationship what has worked what hasn't worked what obstacles you can overcome um, the clear message here is that there has to be some sort of partnering between the two you know um, the, most people don't realize that when children see that division you know they see oh okay this is how I need to behave with foster mom this is how I can be with bio mom when if there is co-parenting involved, then it's just one, you know, kind of one big family in that sense. Granted, it's in two separate homes, but um, it's really a way to give our resource parents um, kind of better ideas, more advice on how to bridge that um, connection. Because I know that there are there is a stigma involved, and we want to say, hey, at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We all make mistakes you know and let's try to work together to overcome them and do what's best for the child because at the end of the day that is what's best is that they're with birth parents and, and then again I want to mention that you know what's like for the first time ever just like Melissa mentioned it's going to be our first panel and um, so we're excited just to, um, about that alone but really those stories and that you know those like Melissa said those ideas that they're relatable to caregivers nobody can relate to them the same as a caregiver to a caregiver or as a caregiver working with a bio parent or you know so those things are very um they're they're um, inspirational to other caregivers hearing from other caregivers and seeing how much you know they've overcome and how they've you know it's 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 gonna be okay at the end of the day so that's what we want that's the message that we want for our caregivers too so yeah, and, and kind of going off of that, do you guys have any um, messages of encouragement for resource parents going into this month? Um, and, you know, maybe kind of tying this all together of um, what they could look forward to at the dinner and then also just overall like a message of support for them. 
Lots of messages. What's yeah. our message in our invitation, Melissa? Uh, so our, our theme, one of our themes for the event is rise to the occasion. And I feel that all of our resource parents always do that. As soon as you say yes to when you get that call for a placement, yes, I'll take that kid. You're rising already to the occasion of not only taking this kid in, but supporting them and loving them as best as you can. Um, I just want to tell all of our resource parents, like, what you do matters. You know, it can be a very thankless job. And right now I want to say thank you so much for doing what you do, um, whether you're taking babies or teenagers, which we really need families that take teenagers. Um, it's, it's absolutely amazing. And we can't do what we do without them. And we're just absolutely thankful. And we appreciate them. And we're more than happy to do the May event and to just honor them. Yeah, for sure. I just want to reiterate, thank you. You know, it caregiving, you know, other kids that are not your own bio kids, it takes a big heart. And, you know, and we want to acknowledge that big heart and we want to support them wherever we could. And it's not um, somebody that anybody could, not anybody can do that, you know, caregiving. So, um, but, but thank you. Thank you for what they do. Yeah. And thank you guys for being on the podcast today. I really appreciate it. Um, is there anything else that you guys would like to share? I don't think so. My my mind is just made dinner all all day, every day until until it's there. But. And we do hope we get to see the caregivers yes. and you know in person and you know and hope for a great event. Um, yeah. And hopefully it only gets bigger and bigger with time, but. It will. It definitely will. It sounds like you guys are on the right path with the discussion. And I think um, there's so many things that resource parents can learn from each other. So I think it's such a, it's so exciting. And I'm so glad you guys joined us today on the podcast. Um, and just for our listeners out there, um, the May dinner is coming up. If you are a resource parent, you should have already RSVP'd. Um, but if you are a person of the community that wants to learn more about resource parents, um, visit our website. You can also uh, look up, up uh, on Bakersfield College website. They have information on their kinship program as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I'm your co-host, Paola Hernandez, and in today's Mindful Minute, we'll be talking about coloring parties. It doesn't matter how old you are, coloring books are a wonderful way for your group to practice mindfulness. But remember, it isn't a coloring contest. The reason why group coloring is so great is that it gives you a task to focus on outside of your normal daily brain routine. It gives you the opportunity to share coloring pages, be messy, and color outside the lines. There are loads of adult coloring books out there, so get to coloring. This has been your Mindful Minute. Thank you for joining us for the Heartbeat of Human Services podcast today. We hope you'll join us next time.